Mark Rogers, TV Talking College Football and getting set for the 2015 season just over a week away. And Georgia Bulldog fans, I've got a special gift for you today because I've got Brittany Taylor Newman on the line from football.com to let us know how Georgia could get to the college football playoff, win the SEC. She's got five reasons why. So, Brittany, I'm, I'm waiting to hear the magic formula for the Bulldogs. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, this feels a little bit familiar, I must say, because I'm pretty sure at this time last year I was on your channel predicting that Georgia was going to win the SEC East, um, a prediction which fell apart in quite a charismatic fashion. But this year I really, really mean it. These are absolute concrete reasons why Georgia will be able to win the SEC championship game, not just the division. Um, my first reason, I've got five of them here first, is Coach Brian Schottenheimer. Um, obviously, he had some mixed results when he was on the staff of the Jets and the Rams, but I think that his style of coaching is a perfect fit for Mark Richt and the Bulldogs. Um, he obviously is there to sort of help strengthen and emphasize the run game that Georgia's already been employing. Um, and he really, really likes to utilize some of the quicker, more up-tempo offensive schemes. He likes the no-huddle. We've seen them already using that in some of their offensive practices. I think he's the absolute perfect perfect fit. And uh, that's reason number one. Reason number two, their offensive line. It's one of the most experienced in the conference. Um, and that's really, really going to make a difference because today is the last scrimmage of fall camp for Georgia. So at any moment now, we can expect Mark Rick to name a starting quarterback. And that experienced offensive line is really going to give that quarterback a chance to get settled in on his feet as the undisputed leader of the team. Um, so they're going to be instrumental there. They're also going to be instrumental with the run game that we've already kind of gone over. Um, my third reason, Jeremy Pruitt, and a very special linebacker that they've got there at Georgia. Last year, Jeremy Pruitt, I think we saw, saw him get off to a slow start. We already know what he's capable of. We saw him at Florida State with their national championship team the year before. Uh, they're returning some starters this year, and I think this is the first year that we'll really get to see Jeremy Pruitt's defensive prowess on the field and they've also got a linebacker a kid named Leonard Floyd who's really really talented very athletic Pruitt has hinted that we might see him used in all sorts of positions uh, with the defense this year so I think we'll see vast improvement on that side of the ball um, and then of course everybody's favorite topic when it comes to Georgia the running backs you know, it's really amazing that last year they were able to plug um, Chubb in when Todd Gurley was injured and really didn't see a huge slack off in production. Um, they've got quite a few guys in their uh, in their running back core that are really, really talented. I think they're going to blow teams out of the water this year. So that's my team number four, or rule reason number four. And reason number five why I think Georgia can absolutely take the eight SEC this year um, is their schedule, which I'm sure we'll dive into here in just a moment. I'd like to get your feedback on that. But I think they've got a lot of things going for them. All right, Brittany, I've been taking notes as you've been talking, trying to keep track of these five. So I, I'm totally on board with the first four. So we have Brian Schottenheimer coming in from the NFL. And despite some lackluster offensive performances from the Rams and the Jets, my recollection is that the talent wasn't exactly first rate in those two situations. If you look at, I don't have the numbers in front of me, I think if you went back and looked at the Rams and the Jets production before Schottenheimer arrived, he dramatically improved those two offenses. And in both cases, he was able to work with the personnel available, i.e. Mark Sanchez and a strong running game with the Jets to get them to two AFC championship games. So I do believe that um, he fits well with George's offense in, in regards to run first, but also doing some unique things with the passing game and spreading people out, playing off of that strong running game. So excellent point there. I like that. The offensive line is first rate. They've got four starters back there. They grow offensive linemen at Georgia. They always have a strong front. A couple of years ago, they were lit little lackluster at the beginning of the season by the end of 2012 had one of the best uh, lines in college football and almost got them to a national championship game. Let's see. Number three, Jeremy Pruitt, big reputation there. Uh, I, I think uh, his calling card is as a teacher and instructor, he teaches fundamentals. He teaches technique inside the scheme 
and uh, in addition to being able to to scheme up an offense um, that that um, that can be successful on Saturday. So Jeremy Pruitt given a raise this year to one point three million dollars. So he he needs to deliver uh, there for the Georgia defense. And in addition, you mentioned the personnel, and I go back to the two thousand twelve team that had guys like Jarvis Jones, and they were loaded with NFL talent, and they underachieved a bit. So that's been the stigma around Georgia's defense for quite some time is that the recruiting is first rate and the guys turn out to be great individual players who move on to the next level. But as a group, they're good, but not great, not elite. But they, again, have the chance to do it. And it's on Pruitt to, to get the job done. Leonard Floyd, Jordan Jenkins is one of the best outside linebackers in the country. And, uh, and also Lorenzo Carter's there. And their safeties are exceptional, led, led by uh, Quincy Mauger. Nick Chubb at running back, um, I would not expect necessarily for him to make a run for the Heisman, not that he's not good enough, but you mentioned the depth at running back. Sony Michelle got hurt last year. Keith Marshall's a guy that uh, rivaled Todd Gurley for carries just a couple of years ago. He's back healthy, so I think they have so much depth at running back. Of course, Chubb's the guy, but they have other options there in the running game, and they can, they can play up a defense and keep that running position fresh uh, into the fourth quarter. So it's really good stuff there. Point number five, we're going to have to dive into when we look at the schedule because it is pretty difficult. Yeah, well, I think what they've got working for them, they've got a couple of things going. But um, when you look at that first month, um, they're starting off versus Louisiana Monroe at Vandy. Um, South Carolina is not necessarily a gimme game, but um, it's definitely a very, very winnable game. And then versus Southern University. So for three of the four weeks in September, they're kind of given this chance to be able to, you know, tighten up any loose ends, make sure that that starting quarterback is comfortable in his position. I think that nice, soft start there really is going to work in their favor um, to get some of those, those last final loose ends tied up moving into the season. You're a step ahead of me. Because I think that's a great point. I think they their big issue is that they have talent all over the place. They have an issue at quarterback trying to decide whether that's going to be Bryce Ramsey or um, that's that's going to be uh, Grayson Lambert coming in from Virginia. They also have the, the running quarterback, Fauda, who's also in the mix. So they've got a three-man battle for the quarterback position. And regardless of who wins that, their reps in practice have been somewhat compromised in trying to determine who the guy is. And you're right. If they're going to win the SEC East and get to a championship game, then South Carolina actually has to give, be a give me. Um, it's not, but they have to win that game. So that's the first four out of the gate. And I think you're exactly right. They, they have inexperienced wide receiver outside of Malcolm Mitchell trying to stay healthy this year. So cohesion in the passing game is going to have to be developed, and that's difficult to do. But they've got four games to do it that they're – fairly safe in winning all four. And then after that, it gets a bit difficult to, with uh, probably the two most difficult crossover division games, uh, looking at the two teams they have to play in the SEC West in perennial rival uh, Auburn. And then they got a date with Alabama as well. Yeah. And I think that Alabama um, won't be as strong this year as they have been in the past. I know the, the name just kind of strikes fear in the heart, but I think that's an absolutely winnable game for them. Um, and that game is at home in Athens. I think what may be trickier is the following week against a Tennessee team that's better than they usually are at Tennessee. And you're just coming off that, you know, if, if they win the game, you're just coming off that high of beating Alabama at home. You may tend to kind of not, not be as prepared for that game against Tennessee as you might need to be. So for me, that first catch is I think that they're, I think they can absolutely beat Alabama. I think they'll be amped up and ready for a big game like that by the time they get there the first week of October. But then can you carry that over and do what you need to do against a Tennessee team that's better than they've historically been in recent years? Again, uh, you're, you're a step ahead of me there because I, I do think that's a great point that if they get geared up for Alabama coming to town, and really lay it all on the line. They have to be careful, obviously, going to Knoxville the next week. Other than that, they've got the difficult games fairly spread out as much as you possibly can in the SEC. I've got this rated as the toughest division schedule, but the eighth best in the SEC. So it's it's manageable, difficult. 
uh, but but it can be accomplished by this Georgia team if they check in the boxes that you listed previously. Yeah, and I think the trickiest one, um, as I kind of looked over their schedule, is going to be that matchup with Auburn. I think Auburn's going to be really, really good this year. Um, people have kind of started to figure Gus Malzahn out a little bit, but you've obviously added in um, Will Muschamp, and I, I think they're going to be a formidable presence. So that, to me, is going to be um, the, the key right there for Georgia to be able to win it all is can they beat Auburn? the first time, and then if there is a rematch with Auburn in a championship game, um, can they beat them again there? I mean, Georgia Tech at the end of the season, that's not necessarily a gimme game. We saw Georgia Tech beat them last year. They're going to be good this year. But I would suspect, it's my suspicion, that if at that point in the season they have managed to win out or they're a one-loss team, they'll know exactly what's at stake um, and that they can't afford a second loss if they're going to try to get a playoff berth. So I would expect them to be ramped up at that point enough that they can take care of business if they're in that kind of a position. Yeah, of course, we've seen they don't have to be perfect. They're in the best conference or perceived best conference in America. If they win three out of those four, they should be in good shape. Uh, discounting uh, some some slip up somewhere that uh, has has foiled them in the past, i.e. the Florida game this past season. Uh, Brittany Taylor Newman joining us from football.com with five reasons why Georgia could win the SEC, get to a college football playoff. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks.